Can the Hoosiers do what Purdue could not and beat Arkansas Little Rock? You are Locked On Hoosiers, your daily podcast on the Indiana Hoosiers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Locked on Hoosiers, your one and only daily one-stop shop for everything IU Athletics. I'm your host, as always, Jacob Rude. want to thank you for making Locked on Hoosiers your first listen uh, this Wednesday, your first listen every day. want to thank LinkedIn Jobs. Uh, they are our sponsor of today's show. They help you find qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Hoosiers have a quick turnaround as they play uh, Arkansas Little Rock tonight and then are right back in action on uh, Friday. Mike Woodson said he wants these to be kind of like a tournament. Um, warm-ups of sort, just physically getting ready to or getting used to the demand of playing and then two days later playing again. Uh, interesting he did this. Maybe not interesting, but, uh, I mean, it would have. It makes a lot more sense to do it this year versus last year where nobody knew if IU was a, a tournament team last year. This year the expectation is much bigger than a tournament. So to kind of have these uh, – Two games in three days. Uh, this is the second time the Hoosiers will do it. And like I said, Mike Woodson has explicitly said that's why he's doing it. Um, so it, it is, it's an interesting warm up for Indiana uh, early in the season to get used to what they hope to be doing at the end of the season. But IU will play Arkansas Little Rock tonight, 6 30 p.m., a little bit of an earlier tip off. Uh, let everybody get done, get home, get settled in before Thanksgiving. Uh, obviously in assembly hall it'll be on big 10 network um and as i said throwing a little jab at purdue uh the hoosiers trying to do what purdue could not of purdue's many ncaa tournament flops that one was perhaps uh one of the most fun one of the most predictable i think a lot of people at arkansas little rock over purdue that year in uh, 2016 as the 125 upset I went back and watched the highlights of that. Um, that was that was a fun. That was just as fun rewatching as it was in the moment. When it comes to IU and Arkansas Little Rock, though, these two teams have only met twice: um, once in 1988, once in 1994. Uh, IU won by 28 points the first time and 24 points the second time. There isn't much of a history here because, if I'm being blunt historically Arkansas Little Rock is just not good uh this season they're ranked 325th in Ken Palm for reference Bethune Cookman who IU just played is ranked 330th so marginally better than Bethune Cookman uh to give you a reference point on that one they have a two and three record this season. They beat Arkansas Baptist, who is not a uh, D1 school, and they beat Jackson State. They've lost to Southern Illinois, Central Arkansas, and East Tennessee State. There isn't much here in terms of results you can take away. Uh, the quick snapshot at, at what they're going to be as a team, what they're going to be is overmatched, if I'm being quite blunt about it. They are very bad defensively. 354th in effective field goal percentage as a defense. Um, they give up a lot of offensive rebounds. Uh, so this should be a field day for Trace, Race, Malik, Jordan Geronimo, all those guys. Uh, they are 356th in offensive rebound percentage on the defensive end, which, as I said, simply means uh, in kind of layman's terms, they give up a lot of offensive rebounds. There are only 363 teams, so they are nearly dead last in the country. Um, they give up a lot of baskets on two pointers as well. Just physically, they're going to be completely overmatched in this one. Um, there, there aren't really any areas that they are, that they're good at. If I'm being honest, um, 
This is just an all around bad team. Uh, so this is a lot. <laughs> there is this game is not about the opponent. This is just kind of about Indiana. It's about this kind of turnaround. It's about figuring some things out for the Hoosiers uh, because this is a game the Hoosiers should be winning handily. Both of these next two games are games the Hoosiers should be winning handily. Um, it, it's between Little Rock and Jackson State, two teams that, like I said, just played each other. Little Rock actually beat Jackson State, even though Jackson State's rated marginally higher. Um, both are sub-300 Ken Palm teams. Um, so it, it shouldn't be uh, too difficult for Indiana in this one. Uh, not really anything of note in terms of the opponent here. As I said, just a team that's going to be overmatched, and, and the Hoosiers should be able to win this one comfortably now. Uh, having said all that, what – is going to be kind of the talking points for this Indiana team. What are we going to be watching? Well, there's a number of things. Um, I, I think there's a couple players I, I want to see kind of get right. Uh, there's a couple things the team can continue to do that I would like to see um, improvements upon. We're going to talk about all of that uh, here in just a moment. Before we do that, though, let's talk about... LinkedIn, the sponsor of today's episode. Uh, these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. Uh, they hire the, they help you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Everybody has LinkedIn. It's simple. You create your job posting. Uh, you add your job to your LinkedIn profile. They have screening questions to help you find those candidates fast, the ones that have the right skills and experiences. And small businesses love LinkedIn. They rate them number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. Uh, so LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. So what are we going to be looking to take away from this game? Well, I think this is going to be generally the same in both games. The first thing I want to see from this game is getting Jalen Hood Shafino right. Uh, he's in a bit of a slump right now. He hasn't had a particularly efficient game, I don't feel like. Um, not at the level that he can play at. At the same time, I think he still had impactful games, if that makes sense. Um, he's still good enough in other ways that even in a game where he shoots 5 of 12, as he did against Miami, it feels a lot better. Uh, against Bethune-Cookman, he only shot 2 of 8, but had 8 assists. Like He's still an impactful player. That being said, it'd be really cool if you saw him go you know, 6 of 9 with 3 three-pointers and 4 of 4 at the line or something like that, where uh, you're like, oh, okay, this is this is the guy that, that we brought in. This is a guy that can get 20 points on, on a team. Um, Again, for whatever that's worth against um, Arkansas Little Rock. But still, just for his confidence, just for his um, kind of getting involved in the offense, seeing him have a strong game I think is important because we talked a lot about or we talked uh, on yesterday's episode about who could be that, that third guy in these big games where Trace and Xavier at this point seem pretty reliable that they're going to show up in these big games based on last season and this season, uh, at least the end of last season, who's going to be that next guy? Is it going to be Malik Renew? Is it going, going to be Jalen hood Shafino? I think it'll end up being Jalen hood Shafino. Um, but in getting him on the right track now, getting him back into the groove sets things up nicely for next week's game against UNC. So let him, uh, try to get his work his way out of this slump. Uh, it'd be nice if the Hoosiers kind of set him up for a couple of, of easy mid range looks early on or run some pick and rolls so he can get into the flow offensively, whatever it takes. I'm interested to see him come out of the gate strong and look good tonight. 
I could say this every single game. I might. It depends. Three point shooting. It, it's just going to continue to be uh, the focus of this team. This is one of those things that no matter how many times you rep it in practice, it's going to feel different in a game. And so as many times in games as you can have strong shooting nights and, and kind of shed that label and um, shed that um, almost worry or anxiety that kind of comes with um, three-point shooting with the Hoosiers, a lot, especially the guys that played last season, it's kind of in the back of your head that there was all this talk about three-point shooting and they haven't been good at it this season. Um, so far this year, uh, they are shooting 36.8% on the, or from the three-point line. Miller Cop's the only one that's shooting well. Uh, he's nine of 17. Xavier Johnson, three of three. I'm going to need a bigger sample size than three shots, but Jalen Hood Shafino's three of 10. Tamar Bates is three of 10. I'm not going to put much stock into Trey Galloway being two of four. Uh, Malik is one of four. Geronimo's one of four. Race is one of 10. Um, so getting some of these guys on track, the more good three point shooting games you have, regardless of the opponent, the less the conversation is going to be about that moving forward. But the longer this team struggles from beyond the arc, the more that is going to be a growing talking point. So if they come out and shoot eight of 17 from the three point line, um, on or tonight, then I'll feel a lot better, uh, even though it's one step against a, a pretty poor team, it's a step in the right direction. So just have a strong shooting night. Uh, so we have we have something positive to talk about in that regard. Are we going to get more Malik and, and Trace minutes? Um, it's a weird, uh, maybe not weird, but the IU has three really good big men uh, that they kind of want to try to play together. Um, with Trace, Race, and Malik is uh, how many more minutes can you afford to give Malik next to Trace without kind of bumping into Race's minutes there and making it feel like he's kind of getting pushed out. So far this season, Malik and Trace have played together for 49 offensive possessions um, and are a strong two-man duo. Uh, Evan Mia, which we we talked about as a stat, has their efficiency rating at 37.2. Uh, I mean, the best two-man duo right now is Malik and Trey Galloway at 79.1. But comparatively, um, with, with other big men, I mean, it's the best of, of those three bigs we said. Um, Malik and Trace is. Uh, Trace and Race have not statistically been great, though that might be the pairing I trust the most. 15.3 adjusted team efficiency margin, uh, but 121 possessions, a much bigger sample size. Can you afford to have um, fewer minutes uh, of Trace and Race to allow Trace and Malik, which seems like a pairing with some more upside, allow that grouping um, to play together a little bit more? Interestingly, Malik and Race also have had not a lot of um of possessions together uh very very few uh so how much are, are they going to potentially p play together i could see that pairing working out well or decently as well but um if these if these numbers are right they haven't shared the floor together which seems surprising but um basically all this boils down to getting malik on the floor more uh, with either of the starting forwards, uh, I would like to see that, but specifically Trace, because I feel like the ceiling is is pretty high there. The last thing is Trey Galloway. Is he injured? Uh, as I said, they kept him out for precautionary reasons against Miami. That can mean any number of things, and we know programs and, and coaches can be pretty intentionally vague about things. How vague was IU being? How intentionally vague were they being? Um, and is he going to be able to return early season kind of reps like this are going to be important no matter what. 
uh, especially with the schedule Indiana has coming up. You want to get some things right now so that you're more comfortable in those UNC, Kansas, Arizona games. It's going to be a interesting challenge for the Hoosiers to kind of continue to juggle these lineups. If Trey is out, who steps up on Sunday? It was CJ Gunn, who I, again, I thought played well, especially defensively. He played well, which is maybe not how most of us expected his impact to come. Um, is it going to continue to be him? Does Caleb Banks work his way into that at all? Uh, is it just simply more minutes for for other guys? Um, how does Mike Woodson kind of balance that? Do you even have a guy like Anthony Leal, who at times made an impact for the Hoosiers last season too? So does he factor into that? There's a number of ways. I, I would say CJ Gunn is a leader in the clubhouse right now, but we'll see how Mike Woodson handles that if Galloway is still out and whether those guys can take advantage of the opportunity given to them. These are the moments where you you play really well in those minutes and suddenly you're getting more minutes in bigger situations. So we'll see how that works itself out. Ultimately, I'm just excited to – every game we get to watch Trace at this point this season feels like um, – I don't want to be sound too, like, exaggerant here, but, like, a blessing. <laughs> like, I – this is – one of the greatest IU players to step on the court. It, just enjoy every minute he's going to be there because this is early on shaping up to be a truly kind of historic season for him. Um, so enjoy these. There's a very finite amount of them left. Let's talk women's basketball. They have a invitational this weekend. We'll get you all set up in preview for that one. First, though, betonline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. If you want to bet on the football game, IU is a 10.5-point underdog despite being at home, despite coming up against a Purdue team, which has been less than convincing at times this season. Uh, so a little bit surprised at that line, um, but still – a, uh, a chance if you want to bet on the football team. I was looking for basketball lines. They are not up. Once they are, you guys can head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about bet online. It's where the game starts. So the women's basketball team is playing in the Las Vegas Invitational this weekend. This is a very uh, frustrating uh, situation coming up. Because despite being a top 10 team, nearly a top five team in the country, uh, there is there's only one way to watch this, and it is Flow Hoops or Flow Sports, uh, which is a $30 a month subscription to watch the Hoosiers this weekend. Kim Adams, who is a sports broadcaster for Fox, was talking about how uh, this is kind of broad or er, er, trademarked, I guess, marketed as Feast Week. Uh, intentionally play on words there for men's basketball, while women's basketball just kind of takes a back seat in terms of national coverage, and that's best kind of exemplified, I think, by this because I there's really no way to watch IU unless you're really dumping out. $30 to watch a pair of games and then not checking in on flow hoops again, because it's just, I think it has a couple of mid major um, mid major teams on there and or mid major conferences on there. And that's about it. Uh, it's silly, but nonetheless rant out of the way. Uh, Kim Adams pointed that out as I was saying on Twitter. And I just wanted to, to share that point that there is a very, Silly double standard going on here and put women's basketball on TV. It's not complicated. People will watch it. The Hoosiers will take on Auburn on Friday, Memphis on Saturday, Las Vegas invite in the, I believe the Mirage ballroom. Uh, both games are at 8 45 PM uh, Eastern time, 5 45 out West. Uh, there are 
10 teams, I believe, in this. Uh, you have IU, Middle Tennessee State, Texas Tech, UTSA, Missouri State, Memphis, St. John's, Mercer, Colorado State, and the aforementioned Auburn. I I think this might be the last time IU plays in a uh, kind of a tournament this low profile. This is uh, this is a very good Indiana team, and um, in a statement that I might eat my words at the end of this weekend, this feels a little bit beneath them. But there are reasons I that there there is something good they can take away from this. Auburn is a team that um, is three and one as I record this. Uh, they play their next game is against um, Indiana Memphis. They have a game between now and the tournament this weekend. I, I read up, uh, I was going to have our locked on Auburn host uh, come on, but predictably considering everything that's going on at Auburn right now, he has not paid a lot of attention to the Auburn women's basketball team. Their football team is a mess. Uh, and they may or may not be hiring Lane Kiffin. Who really knows? Uh, but he did point me in the direction of Harrison Tarr of Auburn Daily. I read some of his uh, work. Who He's been covering the team. Um, kind of got me up to date on what to expect from this Auburn team. And the very first thing, maybe the most poignant thing to jump out about this, is this is an Auburn team that will press you defensively. Full court press. Which, why is that important? Because Ohio State is going to be one of the teams to beat in the Big Ten this year, and that is what they deploy, is a full-court press. Uh, so this seems like a primo opportunity to um, kind of work on on how you're going to break down that press and, and do it in game reps against a, a pretty decent Auburn team. Like I said, 3-1. and one. Uh, They beat Sam Houston, South Alabama, and Alabama State. They lost to Georgia Tech. So... I mean, they're a, a power five school, maybe on the lower end a little bit, but still a power five school. Um, in that Georgia Tech game, they had the press broken down quite a bit, so they went to more of a man zone and a, a one three one zone. It, these are all different looks that the Hoosiers are going to get a chance to work against because uh, that's not – I mean, those aren't typical defenses that are going to be thrown your way, so – uh, in that regard, there is a benefit to playing these games. Memphis on, on Saturday, another team that, as we're recording this, is 4-1. Uh, they, I believe, played on uh, Tuesday night, and they obviously play on Friday. So their record might be a little different by tip-off on Friday, uh, but... I mean, similarly, they've they haven't played a they haven't really played anybody. They lost to Columbia to open the season, and then have played Howard, Miami of Ohio, um, Southern Illinois, and SIUE. So they're again they have not really played anyone. It's hard to really have a, an idea of what to expect from this game. Um, they get the unfortunate task of playing Indiana and then South Carolina back to back. So it could be a pretty rough stretch for them. Um, I think there's also some value in this somewhat similar to what Mike Woodson's doing and kind of recreating this, this tourney experience. Obviously this is a much quicker, much quicker turnaround uh, between games and you'll experience in the tournament, but just physically playing a game and then immediately having to, kind of flush out that game and absorb knowledge of the next game uh, for the scouting report. I think there's a lot of value in that and just mentally being ready to kind of move on to the next game and focus in that regard. So there is some value in this tournament, uh, even if it's all a little bit silly. Uh, the men's side of the tournament, it, it looks like it's going to be available on Fox Sports, uh, or at least they're streaming in that. They, San Diego is like the best team in that. Um, I'm venting a little bit, but it's very silly that there's basically no way to watch this unless you're going to drop $30 to watch two games on a streaming service a couple thousand miles away. Uh, do better, everybody. 
Thanks again, guys, for making Locked on Hoosiers your first listen every day. We'll be back with you tomorrow to recap uh, the men's basketball game and then give you a preview of Friday's game with that quick turnaround. For your next listen, check out the Locked on Sports Today podcast, the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. Follow us on Twitter if you have not already. Subscribe to the podcast. Leave a rating and review, all that great stuff. I love you guys all for doing that as much as you have. Most importantly, though, guys, I hope you have a great Wednesday. Uh, Go Hoosiers. And as always, LEO.